You need to take two apples from your garden and bring them to your friend. But she lives on the other bank of the river. To get to her house, you need to cross a bridge. It can hold your weight and the weight of one apple. If you try to step on the bridge with two apples, it'll collapse into the water, which is swarming with piranhas. What can you do to bring your friend two apples if you can only make one trip? You should cross the bridge while juggling the apples. A billionaire's wife called the police at 8 a.m. on Sunday morning. She said she just found her husband unconscious in his study. A baseball bat was lying next to him on the floor. The police questioned everyone who lived in the house. The wife said she had been away, buying her husband a present for their 10th wedding anniversary. The driver said he had left the evening before. He went to his parents' house because they needed some help. And the cook said he'd been preparing breakfast since 6 a.m. and hadn't left the kitchen. Who's lying? The wife. Stores aren't likely to be open so early on Sunday morning. Olivia was visiting her friend Ava, who lived in another city. In Ava's house, there was one room that was always locked, and Olivia wasn't allowed to enter that room. But she knew Ava kept the key for that room in her desk drawer. And one day, while her friend was away, Olivia took the key and unlocked the room. It was dark inside, so Olivia switched on the light. In the middle of the room, there was a table with a book lying on it. Suddenly, Olivia heard the front door uh -oh. open. She quickly switched off the light, locked the room, put the key back into the drawer, and pretended to be watching TV. Sometime later, Ava came up to her and asked, Why did you enter the room that I asked you not to enter? How did she understand Olivia had been to the room? Ava touched the light bulb, and it was hot. A glass jar is standing on the table so that a part of it is in the air. In half an hour, the jar will fall to the floor. Why? What's inside the jar? Inside the jar, there's some ice, but its weight is distributed in such a way that the jar is balanced. Once the ice melts and turns into water, the jar will fall. Susan worked in a clothing store that sold expensive designer items. One day, she discovered that someone had stolen a pair of pants. Look at the people who were inside at that time. Try to figure out who the thief is. It's the guy on the right. If you look attentively at his legs, you'll see the pants peeping out from under his jeans. Stephen had a storeroom in his house. It got locked with a special padlock which could be closed without a key. But to open it, Stephen had to use one. The only person who had the key was Stephen. There were no duplicates. The man locked the door carefully every evening. But one day, a golden brooch was found lying in the middle of his storeroom. It had been stolen from a museum the day before. The police suspected that Stephen was the thief because no one else had the key to the storeroom, and the man lived alone. Stephen knew for sure he was innocent, but then, how did the brooch appear in the room? Stephen was obviously framed. While he was in the storeroom, the real criminal changed the padlock. Stephen didn't need the key to lock it. That's why he didn't realize the padlock had been changed. Later, the thief opened the lock with his own key and left the brooch inside the room. Uh-oh, something's gone terribly wrong here. Can you solve this case and figure out which food is poisonous?
If you ask me, all these dishes look questionable. I mean, look at them. Spiders, strange green fumes, roaches. But the dish that caused food poisoning is actually these french fries. See those flies around the plate? They don't seem to be alive. That green sauce on top of the fries must be the poison. Now, I have a tricky question for you. When are 1,893 and 2,548 smaller than 498? When they are years BCE. Detective Michael Brown went missing while investigating a tricky case. His friend, Detective Williams, found uh -oh. out that one of their colleagues was behind his disappearance. Williams visited Brown's home, and his friend's wife gave him a note. Michael told me to give it to you if something happened to him. In the note, there were four numbers. Two, eight, six, seven. Williams started to question his colleagues. I've been away visiting my parents, said Tess. Jack said, I haven't seen Brown for a couple of days. And Nora replied, I'm just a trainee. Detective Brown gave me a task and I was busy with it. Williams thought for a while, looked at the note again, and understood who was guilty. Have you figured it out too? It was Tess. Two, eight, six, Seven. The first letters of these numbers make up her name. A treasure hunter got lost in a forest, but after he had been walking for some time, he noticed a crossroad with a big stone in the middle. There was a note on this stone which read 4 plus NO5. The man realized uh -oh. that the sign showed the direction to the treasure, but it was written in some tricky cipher. Can you help the treasure hunter to decipher the code? The man should turn the note upside down. Then it will read south. That's where the treasure is. When Elizabeth was two years old, her sister was twice her age. Now Elizabeth is 18. How old is her sister? Her sister is 20 now. Let's have some fun with a few non-standard riddles. Who is bigger? Mr. Bigger, Mrs. Bigger, or their baby daughter? Their daughter because she's a little bigger. Neat, right? Why do birds fly south in the winter? Flying is much better than walking. What do you get after you crossbreed a radio and a fridge? Some seriously cool music. Why does a math book look so unhappy? Its problems are rarely solved. What is the easiest way to double your money? The only easy way to do it is to put your money in front of a mirror. Let's get back on a more serious detective track. Kevin woke up in a hospital. He only remembers his name and nothing else. A doctor came in to check on the guy. He said three young women were waiting to see Kevin. The women came in. 
Strangely, each of them claimed she was the guy's sister. Only one of them was telling the truth. Who is it? It's the one in the middle. She has a birthmark on her hand, and Kevin has a similar one. Megan invited her friends to a restaurant to celebrate her birthday. They had a lot of fun. Megan got the best birthday present ever. Her friends gave her a ring with a large diamond. But suddenly, the room plunged into darkness. After several minutes, the oh lights no. came back on, but Megan's ring was gone. Look at the image attentively and try to figure out who stole it. It's the waiter. Look at the glass he's holding. He put the ring inside. Now there's much more water in it than before the power went out. Jacob's girlfriend, Nicole, loved riddles. One day, she was on a business trip to France. She called Jacob and told him it was her relative's birthday. Could you go and congratulate my family member, please? When the guy asked her which relative he had to visit, Nicole answered, It's the daughter of the only son of my grandfather. Who is this mysterious relative Jacob was asked to congratulate? It's Nicole's sister. Stuart works as a teacher in an old British magic school, which is located in a beautiful castle. Early in the morning, he's walking down the corridor. Suddenly, Stuart hears a loud noise from the class and goes there to check. He sees three students raising their wands. One of them is a fake wizard. Can you guess who? This guy, he has an ordinary twig instead of a magic wand. Stuart settles down the quarrel and goes to the dining hall. He chooses one of these four breakfast sets. But Stuart doesn't eat any meat or fish. Also, he's allergic to all the purple fruits and berries. Can you help him choose the safest option? First of all, let's exclude the first breakfast. This cotton cheese bagel looks good, but it contains salmon. The second set has toast with blueberry jam, which may cause an allergic reaction. As for the fourth option, fried bacon is hiding under this cute waffle. So Stuart should choose the third option. Although it contains some purple cabbage, nobody said that he's allergic to purple vegetables too. The cook offers Stuart a deal. If you guess my riddle, you'll get a double dessert. Stuart agrees. Here's the riddle. What melts in a freezer? The frost when the freezer is switched off. After breakfast, Stuart goes to the school greenhouse to say hi to Miss Palmer. She looks very confused. In the morning... Three evil wizards opened a magical portal and snuck into the greenhouse. They took the shape of my plants, and now I don't know where they are. Can you help Stuart find them? Take a look at this cactus. It has no root. It just floats in the air without a pot. All the lilies have six petals, but this one only has five. And this pumpkin has a watermelon pattern and color. Therefore, these three odd plants should be the wizards. Stuart walks down the great hall. Suddenly, an owl lands on his head and ruins his hairstyling. Stuart gets furious and asks three students standing nearby, Whose owl is this? Can you spot the owner of this bird? It's this guy. 
he has the same colored accessory as his owl. It's time for the flying lesson. Three students, Wendy, Drake, and Blair, are about to have a race on their broomsticks. Can you spot who's cheating? Blair is casting a spell on her broomstick to make it go faster. Blair gets disqualified. Meanwhile, Drake and Wendy and Rob get ready to start the race. Can you guess who's going to win? Drake has a broken broom, and Rob's position is wrong. It will take him more time to catch the broom and hit the road, so Wendy has the best chance of winning. Stuart begins transfiguration lesson. He gives each of his students an apple and asks them to turn the fruits into stones. And then Stuart goes to the toilet. After a while, he returns and finds a huge toad sitting on his desk. Stuart questions three suspects. Among the students, Drake says, I didn't do it. I was too busy with your task. Luckily, I made it. Bella says, It was Magnus. I saw him catching a toad in the pond last night. And Magnus says, It was Drake. He wanted to distract you because he didn't do his homework. Who's lying? Drake. Take a look at his desk. There's an apple in front of him, but he said that he succeeded in turning it into a stone. Stuart is riding a broom in the garden during his lunch break. Suddenly, someone throws a purple paint tube on his head. Stuart loses balance and falls. He finds three suspects and interrogates them. Billy says, I was just sitting under this ancient oak and doing my own work. Bella says, I was painting Billy's portrait. At some point, I noticed that my purple paint was missing. We both were here all the time. And Lily says, I was just flying on my broom. I didn't even see any paint, sir. Who pranked Stuart? There's purple paint on Bella's hands, but it's okay because she was painting. Billy's outfit looks fine, but Lily has these odd smudges of purple paint on her hair. That's because she hid the tube under her witchy hat after the prank. Stuart is visiting the human world once a week because he loves one local bakery. But today, he finds out that he's not the only magical guy here. Can you guess why? Take a look at this pretty lady. She looks young, but her reflection in the mirror shows she's an old witchy lady. Every winter, a fancy ball takes place at the magic school. Several students perform a traditional dance as part of the opening ceremony. Suddenly, one of the dancers, Lily, loses her balance and falls in front of everyone. Stuart decides to investigate this case and finds out that someone had spilled mm -hmm. olive oil on the dance floor on purpose. He interrogates three suspects. Harry says, Sir, I didn't do it. Lily is my girlfriend. Why would I prank her so meanly? Richard says, Lily totally deserved that. She refused to go to the ball with me. I don't know who did it, but I'm grateful to this person. And Bella says, Before the performance, I was taking selfies with my boyfriend. Look at the pictures, if you don't believe me. Now Stuart knows exactly who's guilty. What about you? It was Bella. Take a look at her selfies. She's wearing a witch bottle necklace and it's filled with greenish oil. But now it's empty. The magic school hired a photographer to take fancy pictures at the ball. This photo was taken at midnight and this one half an hour later. Can you guess what happened here? Beep. 
This wizard didn't push her. He was actually trying to save her by raising his hands and casting a spell. And he succeeded, as we can see from the second picture. The winter ball is over. Stuart throws an after party for teachers at his apartment. Everything goes well, but the next day, Stuart finds out that someone had stolen the rarest and most expensive spell book from his secret library. Stuart has never told anyone about this room, but the lock isn't broken, which means that the thief knew a special spell to open the door. Only four guests possess this level of magic, Ambrose, Morgana, Rosamond, and Richard. Stuart rushes to the teacher's room. He questions all the suspects. Each teacher claims to have nothing to do with the robbery. Can you guess who's the thief? Ambrose, his coat is missing one gold button because he dropped it at the crime scene. Meanwhile, Ambrose looks through the spell book and finds a potion recipe that allows teleporting anywhere. But unfortunately, the last three ingredients are encoded. Here's a hint to crack the first one. It's a flower that can be found between the nose and the chin. Any idea what it might be? Tulips. Here's the next hint. What kind of vegetable do people look forward to getting every month? <laughs> Celery. And this clue will lead you to the final ingredient. What kind of room can you eat? Mushroom. Ambrose finishes the potion and teleports to an unknown place. In the evening, Stuart arranges an urgent Zoom call with his fellow wizards. They're all currently in the same city, but they don't have time to meet offline. Unfortunately, their video call gets interrupted by a stranger. Can you spot the imposter? All the wizards live in the same city, which means they're in the same time zone. The call takes place in the evening. It should be dark outside, but this guy is in the middle of a sunny day. Therefore, he's the imposter. Stuart goes to the magic market to buy special ingredients for a potion that will help him find the stolen book. One violet costs 10 bronze coins, and the price for one lily is 15 coins. Can you calculate the price of this one star flower? One star flower will cost 20 bronze coins. Each flower costs 2.5 coins per petal. And this particular star flower has eight petals. Detective Smith was called to a house to investigate a burglary. Mr. Brooke claimed that someone had broken into his place and stolen his expensive watch. When the detective hmm. arrived, he saw that the front door was open and there was muddy footprints leading to the living room. He also noticed that there was some mud on the staircase. After looking around the house, Detective Smith quickly figured out who the thief was. He went upstairs and arrested Mr. Brooke's son. Why did he do that? The detective noticed that no footprints were leading out of the house, indicating that the thief was still inside. Four friends went out for lunch. Take a look at the image and try to guess which person is the richest. It's the one on the right. The first person has a fake iPhone, so they can't be it. Then the one next to them has ripped shoes, which means she can't afford new ones. The third friend has an empty wallet. She's probably going to ask some friend to pay her part of the bill. 
And the fourth one has multiple black credit cards, which means they're the richest. Freddy went to the castle near his house to return a lost cat. He was greeted by an old man that invited him in. But once he stepped inside, the old man turned into an evil magician that trapped Freddy inside the castle. Then the evil magician said, If you manage to complete three tasks I give you, I'll let you go home. Otherwise, you'll be stuck here forever. Here's the first task. Help me find my glasses amongst all these vegetables. Can you help Freddy? Here they are, right next to the pumpkin. For the next task, Freddy had to make a potion and the ingredients should be added in the right order. The magician gave Freddy a piece of paper with the recipe written on it. Can you help Freddy make the potion? You got to follow the colors of the cauldrons. So first of all, you need to add curry, so the potion will turn yellow. Then you add some blueberries, and it will turn green. And finally, add some tomatoes to make the potion look brown. Well done, Freddy! Freddy's third task is to find a book in this messy room. Can you do it? It's sitting right here behind the floor lamp. Congrats, you just helped to free Freddy. Tuesday, Sam and Peter went to a restaurant for dinner. After eating, the bill was paid. But Sam and Peter did not pay the bill. Who paid the bill for them? Their friend, Tuesday. I didn't see that one coming. Atlas woke up in the attic of an abandoned house. He tried to find a way out of the house, but all he could do was find a room with three doors. Each door hid a different danger. The windows and floor behind the first door were made entirely of magnifying glass, which meant that the sunlight would probably burn him if he entered. The second door hid a room full of poisonous gases. And behind the third door, there was a hungry lion. What should Atlas do to escape? He should wait until it's nighttime and use the first door. Sydney told her mom that her gymnastics team would go to a sports camp for the weekend. She asked her mom to help her pack for the trip. Her mother packed everything she thought her daughter would need. When Sydney came back from the weekend, she was telling her mother all about the trip. But somewhere during the conversation, she asked her mother why she hadn't packed a toothbrush. The mother immediately knew Sydney was lying about where they had really been that weekend. How? Because Sydney's mother did pack a toothbrush, but she put it under Sydney's gymnastics clothes. If Sydney had really gone to that camp, she would have used the clothes and found the toothbrush. Kimberly discovered three bags in an old attic along with a note. The note said that there was $1 million inside one of the bags. It also said that the two other bags were empty. She only had one chance to figure out which bag had the cash. Kim knew that only one of the messages written on the bags was true. On the first bag, it said, the cash is not here. On the second bag, it was written, the cash is not here. The last bag read, the cash is in the second bag. If you were Kimberly, which bag would you choose? You should choose the first bag. If only one of the clues is true, then the money is in the first bag. Becca had just arrived from a two-week trip to Egypt. 
During her trip, she bought a beautiful emerald and wanted to show it to some of her friends. She decided to throw a party just for her closest friends. The next day, she noticed that the emerald was gone. Becca immediately decided to call a detective to help her find the thief. She showed him some of the pictures she had taken the night before. The detective hmm. took a quick look and already had a pretty good idea of who had done it. Take a look at these pictures. How did the detective find the culprit? Look at that girl wearing a hat. At 1 a.m., her hat is flat, but at 2 a.m., her hat suddenly turned pointy, weirdly imitating the shape of an emerald. It must have been her. It's a rainy evening, and Dylan is driving back home. He passes through a bus stop where three people ask him for a ride. Dylan only has one seat in his car to offer, but he really wants to help all of those people. There's an old lady that looks very cold. There's a doctor who claims he needs to get to the hospital for a quick appointment. And a woman that Dylan has a crush on. What's the best arrangement Dylan can make to help everyone? Dylan could lend his car to the doctor so that he could drive the old lady home. Dylan could wait at the bus stop with the girl he has a crush on until the doctor comes back and gives him his car back. Susan found out that her favorite pop band was playing a private concert for VIP clients in a luxurious club. She decided to sneak inside the club through the backyard. But unfortunately, Susan faced a strict guard behind the door. He refused to let her inside without a password. But luckily for her, there was a hint in the guard's t-shirt. The hint was 2 infinity plus B D. Susan deciphered the hint and was allowed in the concert. Can you guess what the password was? It was 2 infinity and beyond. One afternoon, Nicole found her father, Frank, in the living room, really worried about an anonymous text he had gotten. Frank was a private investigator, and he had just received a message revealing the address of the town's most dangerous criminal, Dirty Jack. He decided to go check the area, even if he didn't know what the criminal looked like. The address turned out to be an old warehouse, and when he busted inside, he found four people sitting at a table playing poker. The four people were a carpenter, a truck driver, a mechanic, and a fireman. Without any hesitation or communication, Frank arrested the fireman. How did he know that he was a criminal? The fireman was the only male in the room. The rest of the poker players were women. Bobby and Rachel decided to go grab a cup of coffee. But when their orders arrived, Bobby's coffee came with a fly inside of it. He called the waiter and asked him to change his cup. The waiter brought another cup of coffee. But two seconds later, Bobby called the waiter again and said, Hey, that's the same cup. How did he know? because Bobby had already put sugar in his coffee, and when he tasted the liquid inside the new cup, it already had sugar inside. Are you ready to train your brain with yeah. the help of these tricky brain teasers? Then let's get started. Look at these ladies and try to figure out who's not very smart. Even though the first woman looks as if she's about to touch a hot iron, the device is actually unplugged, so she won't hurt herself. The second lady, though, is about to touch a heated waffle maker. Oh no! John's parachute hasn't opened, and he's now plunging toward the ground. Does he have higher chances of survival if he falls into a lake or on a haystack?
He should try to fall on a haystack. Do you see crocodiles hiding near the shore of the lake? Uh -oh. What do you think is more dangerous in this situation? A bear or a swarm of bees? Look, the bear is about to run after its prey. It won't pay any attention to you. But bees seem to be angry. They'll most likely go after you. Look at these people. Who's most likely to survive? The man hanging over the fire? A woman tied over a barrel filled with toxic liquid? Or this guy swinging over a field of sharp needles? The woman hanging over the barrel with toxic liquid is the one who will survive. Look, there's a hole in the barrel, and the liquid is leaking out of it. The woman just needs to wait until the barrel is empty and untie herself. To get out of the locked room, Jeremy had to crack this puzzle. 1 equals 5, 2 equals 15, 3 equals 215, 4 equals 3215, 4 equals 3215. 5 equals… What number is hidden under the question mark? It's 1. 5 equals 1 because 1 equals 5. But the door of the room still didn't open. Apparently, Jeremy had to solve another riddle. He had to arrange four nines in such a way that they were equal to 100. He could use any math symbols. How can the guy do it? Jeremy figured out the correct answer pretty fast. 99 plus 9 divided by 9 equals 100. You're crossing a railroad bridge when you spot a train coming toward you. The bridge is built over a lake swarming with crocodiles, so jumping into the water is out of the question. How can you survive in this situation? You're farther away from the shore you came from and won't have enough time to get back to that side, so your only option is to run toward the train really fast and turn left or right when you cross the bridge. Jack is taking part in a challenge. He's reached the final stage, which takes place in a desert. If he succeeds now, he'll win $1 million. There are four pots in front of him. In each of them, there's a key. Jack needs to get any key from any pot. But on top of the first pot, there's a bowl filled with a strong acid. The second pot is covered with a bowl full of venomous spiders. In the bowl placed on the third pot, Jack sees a raging fire. A viper is curled up in the bowl, covering the fourth pot. Uh -oh. Jack isn't allowed to drop the bowls or turn them over. Which pot should he choose? The guy should choose the third bowl. He can put the fire out with sand. He's in the desert, after all, and get the key. David's company develops apps for smartphones. Right now, he's looking for a designer. He's got hundreds of resumes, but he's chosen just three of them. Angela's resume says, I'm 23 years old, I don't have a lot of experience, but I'm a fast learner and have already designed similar applications. Helen wrote in her resume, I'm 26 and have four years of work experience. You should hire me because I've created lots of TikTok stories that have gone viral. And Eric's resume claims he's 28 years old with seven years of work experience. He's designed tons of apps and he's been working for Google since the company was launched. David can only hire one person, but it's okay because one applicant hasn't lied in their resume. Who is it? Eric has just seven years of work experience but Google was officially launched in 1998. There are no stories on TikTok, meaning Helen couldn't create them. David hired Angela, even though she hasn't been working for a long time. She's honest and has a nice portfolio.
Three friends agreed to hang out together on Friday night. One of them, Brian, was tasked with bringing pizza. But the guy was running extremely late. His friends were starving. Strangely, Brian wasn't picking up their calls. But in an hour or so, he sent them a selfie. In the photo, he was standing next to his car. In the following message, he wrote he had run out of gas. He was at a gas station, tanking his car up. But his friends didn't believe Brian's excuses. Why? In the picture, it's clearly seen that the guy has got an electric car. It doesn't need gas. Mark told his wife he was going on a business trip to Canada and asked her to pack his bag for him. It was winter, so his wife packed a pair of very warm socks, a scarf, and a knitted hat for Mark. When Mark came back, he said that his business trip was successful. Then he asked his wife why she hadn't put his toothbrush and toothpaste in his suitcase. The woman immediately understood that her husband was lying about going on a business trip. How did she figure it out? She put his toothbrush and toothpaste under the scarf, hat, and warm socks. If he didn't take them out of his bag, it probably wasn't very cold outside, which means that most likely he was not in Canada. One out of nine identical balls is heavier than the others. How can you figure out which one it is after just two weighings? You need to divide all the balls into three groups and weigh two of them. That's how you can figure out which group contains the heavy ball. After that, you should pick two balls from the heaviest group, weigh one against the other, and you'll understand which ball of the three is the heaviest. There was a blackout in the city, but the bus driver still noticed a dog on the road and managed to stop in time and avoid hitting the animal. How did he do this? This accident happened during the day. You have six glasses standing in a row on the table. The first three of them are filled with water and the other three are empty. You need to move just one glass to arrange them in such a way that full and empty glasses alternate. How can you do it? Just pick up glass number two and pour the water into glass number five. You enter a room and see that there's nothing inside but a blackboard on the wall. There are four words written on it, pin, check, boiling, view. You have to figure out a five letter word that can be added to each of them to make an existing word or word combination. Have you realized that the necessary word is point? Then you'll get pinpoint, checkpoint, boiling point, and viewpoint. Now, you're in a strange building that looks like a planetarium. There are photos of distant stars on the walls. In the middle, there's a screen with a riddle on it. N-E-U-S-R-N-E-R-R-S-T-H. U-S. Question mark. You have to figure out what is hiding under the question mark. If you've realized that the correct answer is RY, congratulations! The list is made up of the last two letters of the names of the planets of the solar system. In the order from Neptune to Mercury, Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Earth, Venus, Mercury. Two daughters and two mothers went out to a cafe. Each of them ate a slice of pizza. But strangely, only three slices were eaten. How come? These ladies are a grandmother, a mother, and a daughter. Two of them are moms, and two are daughters.